right, so it's time to finally tackle this bloody bulkhead. Uh, we've got some decent weather, a uh, little bit of time. I have three sheets of super high quality marine grade plywood. I have enough space to work. And I have a mess of a bulkhead. So let's get at it. <laughs> Um, as I might have mentioned before, um, the bulkhead comes up right underneath the uh, cabin top plywood and is screwed into this timber here. So I have to continue to dig out all this um, wood that's been put in here to provide a, that was there for the support for this eyebrow piece. And then I'll have to get all those fasteners out. Uh, then down against the cabin sides, uh, there are a bunch of screws here, some of which have been redone. So I'll have to figure out which one of those I have to pull, uh, which have um, screws into the end grain of the plywood. Down in here, it's not directly on the rib, on the frame. So there are some blocks inside. I have a bit of a mess here, some fiberglass filter around this stringer. I'll cut that out. Um, and then down at the bottom, it appears to be screwed or fastened to the forward side of that floor member. Anyway, I'm going to do this side first and have an idea of how hard it goes and then use that as a template to cut a new piece to put in. What I have discovered, which I really didn't expect at all, was this longitudinal timber here, which I thought was just applied, is actually a full sill. You can see it in cross section. This is the piece I just cut out of here. Um, so what it means is there's a lower bulkhead and then a sill which goes right through and an upper bulkhead. Well, you might think that's might make it easier to deal with. It certainly solves some of the problems I have about coping onto the stringers because now this bulkhead could go on in that direction. This bulkhead could go on more straight on if I rebuilt it the same way. I had always intended that these pieces of plywood would go straight from the cabin top to the bilge. It certainly would be a lot stronger. Um, of course this is rotten, that's why it's weak, but I'm not sure I want to rebuild it the same way. I can see why they did it because they wanted to be able to make sure that any water here was cast down over the cockpit sole when it was when it was installed. But I think I can do that um, with more modern techniques with a reglet and some flashing in there and some better sealants. Anyway I'm just relatively certain I'd rather do this in one piece although it'll be quite a bit harder. So let's see how it goes. At any time I can bail and cut it at that point and do a lower piece and an upper piece and rebuild a sill like this in some much nicer wood than this. I mean, I don't know what this once was, perhaps white oak, but I'll redo it in something uh, probably mahogany. Okay, I have to cut away some of these pipes and wires and some of the other stuff I've shown you. Time to get to it. Cheers. Hard to cut curves. much yeah nice okay so I have the screws out down the side I won't bother showing you that I'm starting to take out the fasteners in here pull this big chunk of silicone out of here and what did I find the head of a carriage bolt well I don't know why I didn't notice that on the inside here there's a row of nuts um, on uh, on threaded bolts so that may be to my advantage if I can just loosen all those I may be able to just tap this off maybe all the old fasteners have already packed it in and uh, that'll come off. There's already been a repair here, I can see, certainly here, and by the looks of it, all of this has been repaired. Because um, certainly there's something going on in here, and whatever was causing this rot, the problem wasn't fixed, because it's rotten again. So uh, let's get those nuts off, and let's see if I can start to just gently see if I can get this to move. I have some stuff to remove down at the bottom, but it's gonna come apart in two pieces anyway. Let's get to it. Honestly, I don't know what you can get done in this world without a fine tool. Okay, that's starting to feel pretty good. It's released at the bottom. A few more judicious love taps at the top. Maybe some prying. There we go. There we go. Okay. 
again, I'm trying to keep the upper part and the lower part together so I can use it as a single template. But to get it to come out sideways, I'm going to have to cut a notch there so that it can slide over the stringer, as I will when I actually in, put the new pieces in. But it looks like it's just about off other than that notch. The notch. There we go. And I have one bulkhead section removed, such as it is. I don't think it's going to make much of a template. Well, not completely useless anyway. Okay, well, this person did quite a nice little inlay. I'll take you off your tripod here for a second. When this repair was done, the last section here, oh sorry, this section here now, um, they had an opportunity to lay in a piece of mahogany in here uh, to fix up the, the rod in there. That's really, really quite nicely done. So uh, this also was all repaired up in here. Unfortunately, it has to be all done again. Um, but I can live with that. Could be worse. Not too bad at all. Wow. Well, there are the various pieces of uh, this side of the bulkhead. Um, no, that's this way. It's funny, I sort of dread getting this nice new mahogany dirty, but it's all part of the process. Okay, so let's see if I can get the template drawn onto here at all. Okay, I'm gonna say that is good enough and it's high enough that when I put that piece in to draw the last piece of the arc I'm good. Now I just need to find a pencil. Bear with me. Because this is so damn rotten a lot of this will be sort of averaged out after I uh, make the original scribe. Like here, wow, I might come back to that. Okay, back down here, out underneath the deck. I'm pretty sure I'll probably cut this a bit big and then do a fair amount of trimming. Another stringer right here. I'm gonna pick this piece up, set it where it goes in here. This top edge is also beveled, so from here to somewhere in here, I've got to put a bevel on that because the cabin top comes down on a slope. Okay, haul this off here. It can fall apart now. Probably rather it didn't. Okay, here goes. When you're cutting curves with a circular saw, you want to set the blade as shallow as possible, just deep enough to make the cut, because you can make a lot tighter curves, because the blade is effectively shorter in the wood. Um, cutting curves in the, with a circular saw is never going to be a particularly accurate type of cut but it'll do for what I'm doing here today. Um, obviously, the notches for the um, stringers are gonna have to be cut more carefully, and the curve up in the top corner, I'll have to cut more carefully, but it's an outside turn. So it's easy to remove sections of an outside turn because the part that you're cutting off can be thin, and well, you'll see. You've probably already done all this a hundred times yourself. Okay, here we go. Okay, here's a good face to make the last of the trims here. Mmm. Now 
this thing. So you want to watch? Okay, let's see how this fits. You know, it all looks great, except for the curve. It's not quite sharp enough. Anyway, it's going to be fine. Well, there we go, done. It's not pretty uh, perfect, but it's pretty damn good, and it's perfectly parallel to where the other side was um, so that's really got me pleased I would say I'm very 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 pleased with that okay so I'm finishing for the day here's the remainder of the bulkhead out the last little piece as I mentioned there's a four foot section and uh, it was half lapped reasonably nicely um, to uh, this small section here, and I won't do a half lap, but I think I'll do a spline. Anyway, that's out of there. Done. Um, yeah, came apart remarkably easy, actually. Uh, there were effectively nothing holding it at the bottom, just mush. And again, it was in two pieces, so this is the piece that was down in the bilge below the um, drip edge line. I would call it a drip edge from my house building years. Okay, well, I didn't want this to sag at all. That's why I wanted to make sure I put the other side in before I did this. Even still, it may be sagging slightly, but as long as I make the new bulkhead the same size as the old one, give or take. Okay, well, I'm going to clean this up and uh, call it a day.